On today's video, I'm really excited to announce that we now have access to Vision OS poly special tools that are available in Unity with the 2022 LTS version. And today I'm gonna to show you all about it. We're going to be looking at different experiences, a fully immersive experience, also a mixed reality experience. I'm gonna show you a bounded volume camera versus an unbounded volume camera. And basically we're gonna talk about all the different dependencies, requirements, and packages that we're gonna need. And I'm also going to show you a demo that I created by bringing in the character controller from the Unity Story Assets and then seeing how that could transfer over to the Vision OS simulator. I'm also gonna be using my PlayStation controller to test that. So let's jump into my computer and take a look at it. So here's the first demo with mixed reality bounded volume. And as you guys can see, the experience, in my opinion, looks really, really cool. You can move it around. This is a bounded area and therefore it's a shared space. And you can look at also the character that Unity provides I think the reflections in this case just take this to a completely different level. I think it looks really quite amazing. So animations work, materials all transfer over. You can also see how we're getting some of the reflections from the real world, which makes this look really cool. Also that indicator means that we're looking at the gazing and it's basically intersecting with the actual object. And this is just an example of me grabbing the character controller and then using some of the assets that the Unity team provide on their examples. I can also use the gaze and basically select an object. As you guys saw, I was able to select it and basically bring it down so that I could jump and then get the balloon from the blocking platform. And then I can also do the same thing here. We can just make sure that we, you know, bring down some of those platforms. That way we can collect the last balloon and once you win you're gonna see some particles so that's also working with poly special in this case i just wanted to show you that i can also run at the same time as i am moving around so this is another set of demos that unity is providing in the poly special samples which i'm going to show you how you can get today and it just gives you a demo of getting input basically the special tab feature and if you move the windows around you can also see how it's all integrated into the vision os implementation here's also a special UI, you know, we have buttons, we have sliders, we have drop downs, and also a toggle that is working. Also a debug UI so that you can see that we can get world position, device position, then, you know, a direct pinch versus an indirect pinch. So there's just a lot of features. And this is another really cool demo where you can see that we are basically scrolling through our environment, but we're not going beyond the extended area of the bounding box. So this is just a really cool use case that I think we can use a lot for games. So as far as the core requirements, you're gonna need Unity 2022 LTS. And the component that you're going to have to install is going to be this Vision OS build support, which is currently labeled as experimental. And then, you know, once you get that going, you're going to be able to build the full immersive experiences and you'll need a poly special plugin too, which I'll walk you through as well. You don't need Android build support. That's just because I do Quest 3 and Quest 2 development. So that will be optional if you wanted to install that. For this video, you're also going to need Xcode 15 beta 2 or greater. That's going to be required. You can get that from the development portal. So again, you're gonna need a Apple Silicon Mac. If you have an Intel, I believe Intel support, it's coming in future releases based on what I read on the documentation. I do recommend a Silicon computer. Those are really, really fast. That's what I'm running this on. And I'm gonna be doing and using that type of computer for this video. So I really recommend using that type of setup. And then URP, which is the universal rendering pipeline, it's going to be highly recommended. And that's because there's additional features available with PolySpatial. You can use Shader Graph. And in fact, if you don't use URP, you, you won't be able to create custom shaders. So with Shader Graph, you can create custom shaders and some of the nodes in Shader Graph will be supported. Some of them won't be supported. So just keep that in mind. It provides an extended feature set when using this rendering pipeline. And then the input system package, that's going to be also, I would say is required, especially because the special tab gesture, it's going to be exposed through it. And I'll show you 
the code that Unity created for that. Basically, that's going to allow you to use gaze and then pinch on the simulator. It's just going to be a click, which is going to, in the device, it'll translate to, you know, the native implementation of a spatial tap gesture. So just make sure that you keep that in mind when you're upgrading or if you're creating a new project from scratch, that's going to be, you know, beneficial. So licensing is a, is a big discussion, right? When I started working on this, I, I didn't have a Unity Pro license activated. I Luckily, because I do these videos, Unity gave me one a while ago, about a year ago, but I haven't really needed to, to get it activated. So you're gonna need, unfortunately right now, you're gonna need Unity Pro. I passed some information to Unity telling them what the community was saying about having to use a Unity Pro license for development of Vision OS. A lot of people weren't happy. Uh, some people were okay with it. I'm going to say that I wish it was available at least on Unity Plus and, and not forcing people to, to Unity Pro because, I don't know, in my opinion, I think it's, it's, it's a lot of money to do all of these. Getting into Vision OS, it's expensive, especially because of the stack, the hardware stack that you need to get, plus the Unity license, plus the device, so it's, it could get very costly, and to be honest, Apple ecosystem, it's costly as it is, so hopefully hopefully that will change, and if it doesn't change, there's, there's an option to do, you could do a trial, which they'll give you 30 days to do a trial, I think I'm moving ahead here, but like I said, Vision OS is, the, is only available on Unity Pro, there's, a, like I said, there's a 30 day Unity Pro trial, which you can use for prototyping during those 30 days. And then if it's for you, then you can go ahead and upgrade it. Maybe by that time, things will change. So I'll pass your information. If you have questions, comments, let me know below. And Unity Vision OS, this is a paragraph that I got from their portal. The Unity Vision OS beta program is available for our subscribers on Unity Pro. Unity Enterprise and Unity Industry. So subscribers can download the Vision OS support packages directly from the package manager and start building experiences for the Apple Vision Pro. So if you try to, let's say that you have a free version right now or plus version and you try to install the packages that I'm gonna show you today, it might look like it's going to work, but then Unity will give you a really ugly pop-up later on saying that you need to upgrade and they basically will remove those packages. So just keep that in mind if you try to if you try to do that. Trust me, I tried and, and it didn't work. So here's the pricing. You can do the 2040 per year or you can do the monthly, which I think it's like $15 more per month if you do the monthly subscriptions. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and open up the Unity Hub to get things going. And I already got some of the components installed for Unity. So you can make sure that you do that if you haven't done that. And then in my case, I already have that. So I can go to installs and I did that 2022, that three, that 13F1 as of today. And if I click on add modules, you're going to see that I should have the Vision OS build support experimental already installed. And you can also see here that it has that tag. So that should be good to go there. Let's go ahead and create a new project. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new project and we're gonna be using your P because we want to take advantage of all the goodies that URP has for us with Vision OS. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a project name. So I'm gonna say, hello, Vision OS. And then you can select the uh, location, also an organization. And I don't wanna connect to Unity Cloud, not in this case. And we can just go ahead and click on create project. Just rename this to be something more meaningful. We can say, hello, Vision OS, and just go ahead and and hit enter. So once you do that, then we can just go ahead and start getting things up and running. We're gonna go into build settings in here. And by default, we're gonna be on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So we can just switch it to be Vision OS Experimental. So click on that, it's gonna take a minute. So if we go into Windows, we're gonna also add a, a new package. And in this package manager, we're gonna click on, we're gonna be spending a lot of time in here. So just keep that in mind and then a package by name. And this one is gonna be the first one. So again, if you're gonna be supporting a fully immersive experience, then this is what you're gonna start with. So we're gonna do com and then Unity XR and then Vision OS. And if you know a version, then you're gonna specify a version. In my case, I'm just gonna do the latest. So just click on add. 
There's also some examples that you can install. I recommend you installing them as well that will walk you through getting some of the XR Toolkit stuff set up by, you know, and then you can run it as well if you wanted to. I'm just gonna do a cube and then show you how the skybox looks like with the cube in it. And then we'll spend more time on that mixed reality part, which is what I'm more, I'm going to be spending more time on it today. The XR stuff with VR, it's really cool. I'll do another video about that if you're interested on that. And then we can also close this as well. So now what we need to do though, is to go into player settings and we're gonna start to get into the Vision OS settings and some of the plugins. So if you go into XR plugin management, you're gonna see that now we have these, you know, invisible icon, I think they might be working on it, but this is supposed to be, I'm guessing it's going to be just the headset, the Vision Pro headset at some point, but it's missing the icon. It's in beta, so I think it's okay. And then just click on Apple Vision OS, and that's what's going to enable the plugin that we just installed from the package manager to work. And then once you do that, you can also go in here to Apple Vision OS, and it's gonna tell you that if you want to use hand tracking, you need to populate what the usage is gonna be. And this is very common from Apple. Okay, so we should be good to go. And then if you notice, there's an app mode in here as well. Again, if you're doing a VR experience, this is where you're going to be, you know, focusing on. You don't wanna do mixed reality because that's going to enable basically to be able to see the real world. For now, we just keep that with virtual reality. There's a last thing that I noticed that they didn't document it. At least I didn't see it documented, but just that's what I'm here for, right? So make sure that you go on their player. And if you are like me, you don't have an Apple Vision Pro device yet, <laughs> then make sure that you do the device as the case. So go into your player and then the Vision OS platform. And then if you scroll, if you scroll down, there's gonna be a target SDK. Then make sure that you change this from device SDK to simulator SDK. That way it's going to allow this build to work on the simulator. Otherwise it's not going to allow you to deploy it to the simulator. We can go in here and then right click on the hierarchy, click on XR, and we can click in here, convert main camera to an XR rig. And then as soon as you do that, the main camera is gonna be converted. And now we should see that it has a track pose driver that should allow us to do the, the head pose tracking. So you can see in here that it's getting that center I HMD reference for the post source. And it has everything that we need to get that going. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rebuild it one more time. And you can move around I can look at the sky. We also have the sun in here. So this is a very basic example, but it shows you that with just a few clicks, we can get a VR experience, port it over to the Apple Vision Pro. So click on window and then package manager, and then we're gonna click on plus and then a package by name. And a package by name, this is where we're gonna be specifying all the polyspatial components. And then the Unity Poly Spatial Samples, I highly recommend that one and also deploying that one because it's gonna show you different examples on, on how polyspatial works with mixed reality, with the bounded volume and also at unbounded volume. Okay, so if you wanted to run this, there's one change that we need to make so we can go into file and then build settings. Remember that we made this a fully immersive VR experience. So we need to change that, go into Apple Vision OS and then we just change this to be a mixed reality volume or immersive space. If you don't do this, the experience is not gonna work. And in fact, you can't even hit play and then make it work. Just make sure that this is changed. And you also need to go into polyspatial and we're gonna be enabling the polyspatial runtime. This is gonna give you, if you wanted to, let's say you didn't have a volume camera by default, this will create it by default. And then you can also add a default volume camera configuration, which by default, it's going to be unbound. You can see that this mode is gonna be set to unbound. So it's going to be a mixed reality experience. So if you wanted to create a mixed reality experience, you could basically use those settings and then you wouldn't really have to create a volume camera. It'll just do it automatically for you. For you. And then you could have these default volume camera settings enabled. There's also different settings in here. The ones that I'm gonna go through is gonna be like particle mode. This is really important for particles. Particles are somewhat working right now. So just make sure that you look at these two different settings. This one is going to be more performance because it'll try to replicate all the different properties from the particle system and then basically 
match it to what Vision OS requires, and then make bake to mesh. It's going to convert that to a mesh, as it as it says, and that might make it look a little bit better. I I I would say play with both and see what you can get, and then enable the statistics and transmit debug info. That's just some information that you can also you can also use. I will go over all of these later on. For now, that's I think all you need to know. And then if we go back in here and we look at the volume camera, and let's go ahead and resize here the gizmos because those are those are way too big. So if you look at the volume camera though, right here on the left side, you can also see that it has these really cool gizmos that shows you the boundaries of the share experience. In fact, if you go here on the right hand side, there's going to be this volume camera. Don't get confused. You still need a main camera to be able to use this or a camera from the XR rig. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to render anything. The volume camera is so that it can render the, the share space or the unbound the mixed reality space. Think of it as a like a pass through camera in some ways, but and, but also it, it makes it makes you know it comes into play when you're dealing with bounded and an unbounded area. So this is gonna be required for a bounded area with share space and then an unbounded area for the mixed reality space. As soon as I do unbound, there's no more bound. So anything that I put in this space is gonna show in the physical world. And then anything that I put outside of this grid when it's bounded, it's just not going to be visible. In fact, we'll, we'll go over a demo that it's going to have a cube that is going to be cutting off at the edge of here. And you can see how it disappears. It cuts off when we push it to the Vision OS simulator. So in this case, let me just show you that you can run this example here in the Unity editor. Let me see if I can pop them all. And this is basically what's doing behind the scenes is actually doing a special tab. So. Think of it when we're using the Vision OS Pro device, we're basically using our gaze and then doing a pinch. So this is going to translate to that. And we can do... But if you go here to the scene view and hit the back tick, it's gonna give you this really cool overlay and you can look at the XR building blocks, which is what we're gonna need. Or you can also, there's multiple ways to create a volume camera. You can create a game object, assign the volume camera script to it or you can go in here to the scene view, hit the back tick, and then it's gonna show us a menu and you can just create it with this. And there's also another way, you can also go into, I think it's under game object, and then you can go into, I believe, the XR and then setup and volume camera. You can also do it that way. I couldn't find this one, that's why I'm showing you the other ones before, but now that I learned this one through the tutorial that Unity provides, then now we can do it this way. So once you do the volume camera, you're gonna see in here, it's not gonna show you anything just yet, but make sure that we put this at zero, 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 but we need to create a new resource. So if you go under resources, right click in here, and then create, you're gonna see this poly spatial option, click on volume camera configuration, and it's gonna give us a name by default. I think that name looks fine, or you can just say this is gonna be or bounded setting, so we can set it, rename it to be underscore bounded. And it's gonna have dimensions in here. I just leave them as they are. I don't think we need to change those, at least not on this video. And then drag and drop here or Apple configuration. And then click on the gizmo here. Now we're gonna be able to see our gizmo, which is, which is really, really cool. Now we can see that. And if I were to change the size of this, you can see that it changes. This is very similar to a you know, box collider. You can change some of these ones. You can, if you wanted to change it here, I can change it. And basically you can change the dimensions manually or you can change it through here, through the, through the editor. So that's basically our volume camera. So then the next thing that I'm gonna do though is I also need to add a couple of different components. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and borrow some assets here from, the, from this project. So if you go into pro the polyspatial samples and then go into share and then go into, you can go into prefabs. There's some things in there that you can look at. We're gonna be focusing on models, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a platform in here so that we can we can use that. And then if you go in the material environments, we're also gonna be assigning a material. And this is a really cool material that it's going to 
that is going to be converted with, you know, to Material X. And this is what Unity is doing behind the scenes with Polyspatial. This is a lead material, so it should be fully supported. And it's gonna, it has a, this really cool look. So you're gonna see how it looks in the simulator. So then the next thing, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here so that we can see, we can see what we're dealing with. And then what we can do though, is we can just resize it a little bit here. And we can also go back into the volume area and then we can do something like 0.5 and then 0.5 and then 0.5, or you can do the, the scale all the way through. And then I'm just gonna show you that we have more space and then we can just do something like this. So if I were to look to zoom out, you're gonna see now that that is within the boundaries, right? It's within the boundaries of our, of our volume. So I can click on the volume and that, that should be rendering correctly. We could even resize this a little bit more. We can do maybe 111 and then maybe this one we can do 0.75. And I think I like the look, the look of that. Just make sure that you look at where the camera is because right now it's not going to render. And the camera is all the way on the very back, so that's something that we probably need to change to. If we do 0.5, I think that looks good. The volume camera, I think that looks good. But just know that the, the camera is all the way on the very back. And then we can also change the Y value here. And then maybe we just do a negative value. Uh, let's do negative, negative one will we'll work fine. So this is gonna be the device location, right? And then this one, this is gonna be what we see through our camera. And then that texture here, I'm gonna set it to on just to make sure everything works. And then if we go back in here to models though, now we can go ahead and add the cube. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a cube here. And then it's gonna be a very tiny, very tiny little cube. So we can do maybe, let's go ahead and do five and then five, five. All right, guys, so I got these running. You guys can see here that it shows the, you know, the bounded area and also the cubes that are currently getting cut off. And in fact, in here as well, it's showing that as well. And you can see here that the actual materials just look really beautiful as we go through it. You also get this bounded box. It's basically a window behind the scenes that you can, you can move around. The other thing that is cool though, like to keep this in mind, this is a shared space, right? So that means like if I wanted to bring something else, let's say that I wanted to bring Safari here, maybe put it on the left. Now you have access to, you know, to Safari here on the left and also the app that you are developing. I can also go here and let's say that I wanted to go to a different environment. We can go to a different environment. You can see how this actually looks on that different environment, which is really, really cool. Basically go in here to where it says mode and then just change it to unbounded. Now I can go in here and maybe I'll just put a cube, a large cube over there. Maybe I'll just put this one over there. And now we have the two apps up and running. So let's say that we wanted to open the experience that we just built, which is going to be unbounded, right? It's gonna be mixed reality. It's not a shared space. So now if I click on it, Everything that we see goes away because now we are completely using mixed reality. And we can see now the cubes that I added. This doesn't look beautiful because I it's really not a full-fledged experience, but you get the idea. We have the cube in here, the cube, and also the platforms. And then if I wanted to open another app, this one is going to close because now that was a dedicated mixed reality experience. So pretty cool and pretty powerful. So let me show you some of the mixed reality features that you can also add to an application that you're building for Polyspatial. If you hit the back tick in here in the scene view, you're gonna see that we have this XR environment. And right now we cannot do anything with it because we haven't really enabled it. So go into file and then build settings. And when I click on player settings, and if you go under XR plugin management and go into the standalone version, you're gonna see that we have this XR simulation tool. So just, just go ahead and click on install. And once you do that, the other setting, the overlay, it's going to be available. Now we can close out of this and then close out of this. And, and now if we go ahead and, can just go ahead and hide it and then bring it back on. Now we should have it activated. And if you click on this globe symbol, you're gonna see that now we have basically a simulation area that we can use for 
you know, for testing, which is really, really cool. And, and again, powerful. And what I'm gonna do though is there's also additional environments that you can install. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on install additional environment. So we got all the environments downloaded. So we can go in here and look at all of them. You can look at the office. I can go ahead and look at, you know, maybe a park, maybe just the default works for you. But there's just different environments that you can use to test your experiences. I think I'm just gonna do an office 12 by 12. I think this, this looks pretty cool. Another thing that I wanna show you though is also go into file and then build settings. And I know that I'm throwing a lot at you, but this is gonna be very helpful for development. Just click on use XR device simulator in your scenes. Just make sure that you disable that once you're ready to deploy to the simulator. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to, to run your Vision OS app. So that needs to be disabled when you deploy. So for now, we're just gonna use it in the editor so we can just enable it. And then you're gonna see that that's going to add an overlay so that we can use the the simulation of a, a hands, which is what it's provided for Vision OS. And if you're using that on Quest 3, it'll use controllers or hands. So it just works with multiple multiple devices. So, so pretty cool stuff. So if we go in here, this has a XR Origin, right? And it also has a AR Plane Manager. So this is gonna do plane detection. And then if you go ahead and expand this, you're gonna see that this also has meshing. So it has, basically it's going to reconstruct the environment with mesh by using the Vision OS, the Vision Pro cameras. And then it also has a hand manager, so it's going to be building a skeleton. So we're gonna get some errors because this is not gonna have everything. It doesn't have the actual subsystem for hands built into Unity. So for now, it's just gonna allow us to test it, but it's not going to work fully. But just I'll just show you how it works. So we can just go ahead and hit play. And you can see in here that we have access to the HMD, we have access to controllers. In this case, controllers doesn't work, right? Because it's not for Vision OS. But in our case of hands, we could use this fully. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab and it's gonna take me to my, my headset. And now I can look around, right? We can look and see, I'm gonna hit escape and then hit HMD again so we can look around. And you can see that as I look around, it's building some information. There's, looks like there's a plane that got generated there. I believe this is a mesh that got generated. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold my right mouse click and basically use WASD to, to move around. You can see that now I can move around the area and then it's going to generate planes. I could pro probably generate planes also on the wall. Let me go ahead and go back in there and get closer. But you can basically just look around and on the, I'm gonna hit escape. You're gonna see on the left side though, we have now our simulated camera. We also have trackables, which, which is what I was looking for. And now, now let me just make this a little bit smaller because I wanna focus in this area. And if you wanted to make sure that meshes are getting generated, you can look in here that there are meshes that are getting generated. Maybe you wanted to do a ray cast from the hands position and you wanted to test that, you can do that. There's also planes in here that are getting generated and it just gives you, you know, more information about the surroundings. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit H to go back to, to hands and then go ahead and hit T. So now I can move, basically activate the left hand so I can move my mouse around by doing that. Another thing that I can also do, there's a list of different, you know, actions that you can do on hands. You can do N and that's going to do basically a poke I can also do a pinch, which is what's going to be supported with the actual, you know, Vision OS operating system. So this is something that you can use to mock that up. If I hit M again, it's going to basically undo that. And there's multiple here, multiple poses that you can also use. I can also hit uh, basically the Y key, and now it's going to activate the, the right hand. And I can also do the same thing, right? I can do my pinch. I can also do K if I wanted to do a grab and then hit K again to undo that action. And you know, that's going to allow you to do that. If I hit space though, and I go back into hands, and now I can activate both though, right? Now I can move and do that. I can also do pinch with both by doing M. I really hope you enjoy this video. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know. If you want access to the character controller demo that I show you today, it's going to be available in Patreon, so make sure that you check that out and also make sure that you hit the notification bell and subscribe so that you can get notified 
of future videos that I'm making with Vision OS and Polyspatial in Unity. Thank you very much, guys.